For me, mornings are God forsaken. <laughs> when I was in India, my alarm clock went off at 4.15 every morning. And that is an ungodly hour in my book. I would wake up, not just to the alarm, however, but to the sound of the bhakti yoga, yogis in the hills. And the bhakti yogis have, as part of their sect, a big emphasis on chanting and music, and lively chanting and music, uh, as a sign of devotion, as a sign of love for God, that is as lively as this idea of, of pouring oil on Jesus' feet, as lively as drying his feet with their hair. And I would wake up and hear them just going wild in the hills with their love for God. God was in that place and God was there in that time. The psalmist wrote, Where can I go that you are not? Where can I go to flee your presence? And the answer is nowhere. There's a concept in the Sanskrit literature, in yogic philosophy, called Bhuma. B-H-U-M-A. And it refers to the plentitude of God. This idea, the expansiveness of God. That God does not just live within us, but that God lives without us. Wherever we go, there is no place we go that God is not. Nobody controls God. Nobody has monopoly over God. When you leave this place today, God does not stay behind. God is wherever you go. And as one scholar put it, we should be mindful of God. Whether we are doing the most sacred act or the most mundane, we should be aware and living joyfully in the sense of God's presence even when paying our bills, if you can imagine it. This, to me, is the 10,000 charms. 10,000 is an outrageously large number. There's not a limit on there. It's to mean there is no end to God's goodness and God's presence. In 1 John chapter 4, I think we get the best distillation of this idea. And it says, God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Consciousness of God, which we manifest in acts of love towards others, supersedes anything the world can present us with. Any fears. It doesn't take our troubles away. But we know that we live in that plenitude, in that expansiveness, within those 10,000 charms. The Bible reading for today doesn't tell us much about the woman. 
we know that she's weeping, surely tears of gratitude. But it doesn't say much about the mood that brought her into that house. Was she fearful? Was she bold? Was she brash? How did she respond when the Pharisee made his comment? How did she respond when Jesus made his comment? And I like to imagine that there she is living in this puma, this, this awareness, this bubble almost, where all this stuff, all these fears, are immaterial because she is simply in God because she's doing an act of love, an act of devotion, and God is there with her. And God is made manifest in that room through her act. We sing today a couple of hymns that use agrarian imagery. Harvest, wheat, tares, all are safely gathered in. And yet, so many of us feel that we have barren fields. Because to some extent, our fields are barren. Not just materially, emotionally, psychologically, socially. But these words promise us the abundant life that Jesus came to bring. An abundance not of things, but an abundance of God's presence. And it is in the fullness, the expansiveness, the plenitude of God. God's figurative arms that we find those 10,000 charms. Amen.